Right, this is what we're going to use for the rotor. I'm sure anybody in the in the video world, what this is a head drum motor. Just machine that edge off. That would be the lower half of the head drum with the bearings in. Uh, I've drilled three little holes and countersunk them so they can be mounted into a board nice. That screws on the top, and this is when I've actually drilled that lot, if you can see them in several places, for the magnets. This is one I did for uh, the one that you've seen in my big one. This is just a spare one that I got. That... So we're just going to actually use three of the holes. We're going to use that one, that one, and that one. And we're going to put some... So where my fingers are touching is where the magnets are going. So in a star configuration, if you like. Or a triangle. Very important you get them right though. And we're just going to glue some small magnets in there. So I'll get those out and do that. Right, pick my magnets out. Now this is a little compass. I don't know if you can actually see that there. Got my magnets, little Neo ones. And we actually want uh, north facing ones facing outwards on our little wheel. So we need a south attraction. There we go. I don't know if you can actually see that or not, but that's a south attraction. So that's telling me that one because opposites attract. That's telling me that face there is north. So I'm taking that off of that one. And we're now going to put that in the end of there that I've pre drilled. Now, just gluing these magnets in. I don't think is good enough. I haven't actually glued these yet. Um, I also use a piece of this which is actually um, aluminium foil that's used on heating ducting. Sticky back, very strong and definitely holds the magnets in at high speed and I do recommend you tape them in even if you glue them with the strongest epoxy resin in the world. Um, I suggest you still put this in as a safety precaution. I'll get on with doing that now. Right, so our rotor built. I know this has got more holes in it but I've only actually used three of the holes. So now I'll get that assembled up on a, on a board all complete, screwed together, locking nut on and we'll get all that done and screwed together for you. Right that's the piece of board we're going to use to, uh, to assemble the motor. As you can see an hole has been drilled in it that's for the rim of that so it just sits in the hole nicely. Just sticking out the barrel. So I've actually got to put some uh, little packers on the bottom, but uh, we'll actually screw that in position. Right. That's screwed in position, well, that's the rotor fitted. The bearings aren't, aren't fantastic in it, but they're okay, there's no playing them, a little bit of noise from them, that's all. I should really change them, but this is only a demo, so actually, what we're actually going to do now is we're going to fit this very close to that, as close as we possibly can, so there's not much of an air gap. And we're going to, uh, you can see the dimples, that's, they've got to line up identical to the centre of that. So that's what we're working out now, and we're going to get that fitted. Right, what we've done this time, I wouldn't normally do it like this, just drill two 6mm holes in those 12mm walls, and we've put two dowels in. What we need to do now is find the centre and, um, of the actual spindle. So there's the centre. Get roughly where it's going to fit, like so. Make sure the rotor turns. Just quickly mark those up. Then we'll find the centre of those, scrub them in, drill the two holes. They do go right through, we've got a bit of dust in the bottom, sand them off just so they look pretty and you're going to get rid of all the, get rid of all the marks. Now I can see the pulse motor and flywheel mounted. I just glued two little battens on each side to allow clearance so that don't touch the bed when it's spit. Now we're going to mount our Bedini circuit and screw it there like that vertically and then we can make all the connections where they need to be. So that's the next stage. Well, that's it all together. So in other words, that is now screwed from underneath with three screws, just to make a complete little unit. And then what we do is we wire from there to the coil. Right, put my first bit of wire on from the start of the motor. So where we put the uh, S run wire for the start now goes to that connection just there which comes from the positive of the run battery goes to the start of your windings on your coil 
the ones we marked up. Right, first connection on, and obviously the other side of the run coil, which is there, goes to the other end of the circuit, as on the diagram. Right, that's both ends of the run coil now connected. I normally don't like to use the trigger coils, I find them, um, I'd rather use the outputs to run something like a bulb or to charge another battery, but for the benefit of the Bedini type circuit, we're going to use the run coil. Anybody who wants to duplicate or do what I've done here, you don't have to use this kind of rotor, you can use whatever rotor, a bicycle wheel if you want, uh, that's what the Bedini circuit calls for. Just for the benefit of this circuit and the quickness and neatness, I uh, decided just, just to stick to this and put it together for you. That coil would run a big wheel, anything you want, so the coil would remain the same, it's just this bit you'd change. Right, you can see that, all the four wires connected up. Start, start of the coils, ends of the coils. So this one here on this side is the trigger coil, and this side is the run coil. That's the start of your windings of the of the run coil, the end where you finished on your run coil, and same again, start of your trigger coil, end of your trigger coil. Now we're just going to put, um, instead of connecting the batteries right up at the top here, we're just going to put a couple of a couple of wires up to the top now, so it'll be charged battery on that one, run battery. Right, so the motor all set up. What I'm going to do now is test it to see if it runs. Oh, there she is, running away. Do a bit of a twiddling. Obviously, it does make a difference. Slows it down, speeds it up. That's it anyway. Slows it down one direction, speeds it up in the other direction. And its voltage is that's the input voltage. Battery's reasonably charged. And that's the output voltage. So it virtually matches. A little bit lower. I suppose I ought to put a dead battery on it first, but I ain't got a dead one, so there you go. But I think you'll agree, good little experimenting board. Uh, only built it just to show you a neater way of building these things. The transistor's not getting hot in any way at all, and neither is any other components. If you wanted to put the other little bulb in, the Bedini circuit says, that wire there, just take that wire off and just add it between them two there. Put the low voltage bulb in, but you'll find this thing will just burn out every time when you do that. As you can see with the uh, battery disconnected, the charged battery that is, you can see the uh, little light glowing there. As soon as I put the battery charge battery on, which I'll connect up now, and you can see it disappears. The only thing I would, I would suggest is to put some fuses in this line here, well, both of these lines, but close to the battery as possible. That's it, nobody wants it. Give me 50 quid, you can have it. <laughs> only kidding. Um, just a test. But just to show all you chappies out there, there's another way, as I've said, of building them. Any circuit that um, this applies to. Just bang nails in a board, solder to them. Literally. This was the next one I was going to have a play with. We call it a window motor. Well, I hope you find those three little videos I've done for you of some use. It actually took me four hours complete, start to finish, to build that. Uh, but the same as I've said, circuitry is what I work with every day. Anyway, again, hope that's useful. Thanks for viewing.